Welcome back, cadets! Vice Admiral Titanium, welcoming you on board the spaceship Titanium Mine! Toot toot! Uh, anyway, we're gonna be talking today about Dead Space. Okay, so here's the thing. I wanted to talk about the new Dead Space because I've been starting to play Dead Space, but there is a problem with it. I haven't really gotten all that far in it as time of recording, and I wanted to spend more time with it, so... We're we're gonna talk about No Man's Sky instead. I apparently never did a Citanium Mine on No Man's Sky. I thought I had, but no. So, let's just do that now. But first, let's go over the checklist. Microgravity. Uh, actually, a lot of the game is set in microgravity. You use a ship to get through it, but you do... Yeah, the, the void of space is definitely there. Oxygen meter. Um, I'm gonna say no. You do harvest oxygen, and it is used for life support, but it's not really an oxygen meter that counts down. Unless I'm forgetting something. I, I, don't, I don't think that's a component that comes into play, if at all. Uh, aliens. Yeah, there's several alien races that you meet in the game. And uh, you, you learn their little alien language, so that's fun. Lasers. Yep, you got a laser. And your enemies have a lot more. Robots. Uh, yes. There are some robots in the game. Most of them are evil. Spaceships. Yes, actually, a good chunk of the game takes place on spaceships. Uh, freighters, flagships. Yeah, you do dogfighting. Whole bunch of spaceships. Weird food. I guess weird food depends on your definition of something called fibrous stew. So yes, No Man's Sky was originally announced from Hello Games in 2013, and eventually was released in 2016 to some... How do I put it? Really bad reception. No Man's Sky is, is a game where it's meant to be huge. Massive. So massive, in fact, that you could not possibly hope to explore all of it. There's just no way. You could try to land on every single planet in the game for all but 10 seconds, and it will take more of a, than a lifetime in order for you to actually play the entirety of the game. It, it is just not possible. And yet, Despite all of that, when it was released, it didn't really have much content to it. It was just landing on random planets and checking stuff out, man. The problem was that initially after release, there were some pretty big bugs and glitches and crashes that users were experiencing, but that wasn't really the bigger problem, which is that a lot of the features that Hello Games had talked about weren't really in the game. Uh, this includes things like base building. Uh, they, they just didn't have those things in it. And a lot of people were disappointed. It left a bad first impression. In fact, fun fact, the uh, UK's Advertising Standards Authority launched an investigation into No Man's Sky after it received several complaints about the game's potentially misleading advertising. That from a GameSpot article at the time. Yeah, there were definitely some problems, and there was a good chance that after people started talking about refunding the game, that Sean Murray and the team at Hello Games could have just simply walked away. They could have said, well, this didn't go well. Moving on to something else. But they didn't do that. Um, the team at Hello Games actually just worked a lot over the ensuing years to put in to No Man's Sky everything that people thought it was going to have at launch, and then so much more. If you go to play No Man's Sky today, you are going to find that there is base building. You are going to find that there are alien space stations where you can trade and you can learn from all the different alien races that are there. You are going to find that there are outposts that you can secure for yourself on planets. And you can help the people that are there and uh, counsel them when they have problems and try to make decisions. 
therein. You can have flagships. You can have several ships that you uh, purchase and, and, and buy that are also able to go on missions all their own and explore the vast recesses of space. There's a ton of new content that they've put in with major, major patches over the years. And that's really why so many people have an overwhelmingly positive response on Steam now. They actually went and put in the work. The game starts you out as an explorer that has crashed on this planet. And because it's procedurally generated and they don't really have a specific spot that you start, you just pop onto a planet. They give you a ship, but your ship is damaged, and you need to go around this planet to find basic resources, break stuff down, do a little bit of mining, in order to repair your ship. And once you can repair your ship, you can get into space, and you can go and visit some space stations and start the main missions. Because, oh yeah, now, now there are main missions, too. You, there's, like, stories and stuff now. So there's something. The game is actually very smart at giving you a little bit to work on at the beginning, which is mostly, like, collecting things like carbon or oxygen or nitrogen. It's one of the things I really like about the game is that it kind of breaks stuff down to these, these basic elements, and those are what you actually have to collect. And it does a, a good job of explaining to you that like everything is, is based on these, these basic components, uh, and you need them in order to build everything in the game. And then they get more complex ideas and foreign ideas about like plant matter and uh, these, these like luminous pearls and stuff that you collect over the course of time. And so it expands out from there. But at the very beginning, it's all about just collecting things like carbon and sodium and oxygen and nitrogen. And I really appreciate that because you can prepare your ship with stuff like that, with basic metals like copper. You know, they, they do that. And then after you repair your ship, you can either go into space and meet up with you know, outposts and talk to different alien races, but you can also just explore each one of the planets. And the planets are fully explorable. There are things on those planets. There are outposts on those planets. There are hidden relics on those planets. And this actually leads to something I find really unique about No Man's Sky that you don't see in most games, which is this focus not just on exploration, but of understanding. You'll run across these relics, and if you touch them, you learn a word. You learn how to actually translate a word from one of these alien species languages. And so the intriguing part about this is that you're also learning how to communicate with these alien species so that you know how you're answering them when you talk to them. At first, it's all gobbledygook. You don't understand a single thing that these alien species are saying. And then, when you start learning words, those are translated for you now. And you realize that the more information I get, the more I'm going to understand and the better I can communicate. So there's like really a communication element to this, of discovery, of learning about the species themselves that are out there. And even the main quest line is sort of about understanding these things that no one in the known universe seems to, to know about, about like ancient cultures and relics and, and, and organizations. And that's really interesting. It's a really interesting thing. But in addition to that, you also get to build bases. You get to explore a bunch of different kinds of biomes. You get to go under the surface of planets. You uh, get to mine. Like, the planets themselves are fully mineable. I can uh, shoot a mining beam and tear up the landscape. There's a ton of things that you can do, and it's basically just the largest sandbox that gaming has ever created. And then you start to 
feel like, well, okay, but I'm just going around through the motions, and then something else will introduce itself. Sometimes because of the updates, sometimes because you just get to a point in the storyline where it makes sense. When you get your fleet, and you get your flagship, and you start hiring other ships to, to be part of your fleet, and you start to build out facilities on your your fleet ships, it just kind of expands the whole notion of, of how big this world is, and how big you as a person inside of it, can be. Something that I thought was really interesting is I came across, just randomly jumping into a system, I, I came across like this abandoned freighter, and it allowed you to dock with it. And this is something I'd never seen before. I did, like, I played this game for a long time, and this is like, what's this? And I could dock here? And I dock with this thing, and all of a sudden... I'm, like, in an alien-style horror game where this abandoned ship that a bunch of stuff is shut down and I could, be, I could cryogenically freeze if I, if, I, if I don't find sources of warmth has, like, these little, like, alien slug things and they're, they're jumping at me and I have to kill them and then find a, a spot. All of a sudden, it becomes dead space. It becomes dead space for a bit. And... So you can find out what happened to the ship. And it's just... It comes out of nowhere. There's a space anomaly. It's a giant eye bug in the sky. Where'd that come from? No Man's Sky is really good at this. They just keep presenting you... Maybe partially because it's procedurally generated, partially because of all the updates that they've done over the course of time. They just keep presenting you with all of this... Stuff where you're like, I didn't know that was even a thing. One of the more recent updates that they had done when I played was they had done the Foundation expansion. When they did the Foundation expansion, they allowed you to actually set up outposts. And so you would go to a planet and you would see that there was this fully fledged outpost with all of these buildings and all of these people living in it. And you could become like essentially... The, the mayor, you could claim this outpost, and then you could utilize resources in order to build it out. And you'd hear complaints from the different townsfolk, like, Oh, I have a beef with this guy. Oh, I have a beef with this guy. Okay, let's see if we can mitigate this situation. And all of a sudden, you're like, wait, I'm playing Dragon Age Inquisition now. When did that happen? I gotta, now I gotta deal with the minutia problems of the outpost that I'm on. Uh, the whole game is structured in being this very open-ended thing, but with so many different systems inside of it that keep stacking upon each other because No Man's Sky keeps insisting on doing more and more and more and even including new modes. I haven't tried all of those modes, uh, but they do start to add in ones that are more survivally based, you know? I understand why people have grown to really love it because the crew behind it tried really hard in order to make sure that the game succeeded, even though it would have been very easy to walk away from it. But the reason why I stopped playing, well, the first time I stopped playing, and then the second time I went back, because I knew people that were playing it over at TPK, the second time I went back and I played more of it to see all the new stuff, I did eventually stop. And I think the reason why I stopped is it has the same problem as a lot of these space games which is their scope is so big that it is impossible to really wrap your head around what you're supposed to do. It does start to become such a sandbox that feels decentralized that it's hard to wrap your head around what I'm supposed to do in the game. It is very large, and there are some pretty vast nothingnesses inside of that. And I think that's really where the problem with the game comes down. It's not for lack of ambition. No Man's Sky definitely has ambition. We're talking about like a one-to-one -one replica of the universe that they tried to create here. That ambition is there, that size is there, but I am of a firm believer, and I think I talked about this during Starfield as well, bigger doesn't always mean better, Bigger can just mean 
more empty space. No Man's Sky has done a good job of filling a lot of that empty space, but it still has the empty space, and it kind of needs to, because again, it's all of space. I don't really know how to fix that, though, because the the theme of No Man's Sky is this seemingly endless open environment, and they succeed at doing what they set out to do. If I were to build it, I might have limited the scope a bit, and maybe, maybe, I would have just made the individual planets and the systems a little smaller, uh, put everything just a little closer together, like, just, just half everything in size. Like, the planets don't need to necessarily be as big as they are. Some of them are huge. And to traverse them on foot or even in your ship, like, a rotation around is going to take you a long time. My thought was, well, if you had smaller planets and you just kept the same amount of stuff on it, but you just condensed it down so that it was just, like, a quarter of the size and then everything was only one quarter of the ways away from each other, it would help quite a bit because you wouldn't have to traverse as much. Uh, and there is also one other problem. And I think it's the problem that you find with most procedurally generated things, which is that either you're going to wind up with a sameness when you get to a planet and go, oh, I saw something like this before, or it doesn't feel like it's very focused and curated as an experience. It was a problem that I had with Starfield, which is that the curated stuff where you have built environments felt pretty good. But then when you get into the outskirts of where they kind of procedurally generate things, it feels unfocused because it was not purpose-built. It was built with elements that they wanted to combine in interesting ways, but it was not purpose-built. It's there for mostly like resource gathering or so that you could build a base on it. You know, all of the sandboxy things. But is there a reason for it to exist outside of that? No, not really. Uh, no Man's Sky has the problem of being entirely that. And so I think it hinders itself from being played long term for people who really want to have a more personalized experience. There is, though, a lot of fun in feeling like you really are the first person to discover a, one of these planets, because you probably are, and discovering a species that no one else has seen before this, and being able to name it and to categorize it. There really is something cool about that that you don't get in any other game. No Man's Sky is not like any other game that you will play for that very reason. And so it's a very special experience. I don't know if it's for everybody, but I sure found it to be a triumph of game designers being willing to work to create the vision that they originally intended and then exceed those limitations. That's a wonderful story. It has worked out very well for Hello Games. It has worked out very well for people who have No Man's Sky. And I I appreciate it on, on those levels. Don't know if I'm going to be going back to it anytime soon, only because... I kind of know what I'd end up doing in the game, which is mostly just tooling around and not doing anything important. And I have a lot of games where it feels like I, I need to go do something that feels important or motivates me to go and do it. And No Man's Sky is fun to wander around in, but I never felt motivated to do this next thing. That, I think, is where it loses me, but that doesn't change the fact of how wonderful an accomplishment it is. And that really needs to be acknowledged. If you were not going to play No Man's Sky, what would I suggest you play instead? Well, I mean, I think you should play No Man's Sky, but if you don't do that, I would suggest playing, well, actually, a game I have talked about on the show, Everspace 2. Um, the reason why is because Everspace 2 also does like an open world sort of galaxy or several of them that you experience, but it's all done in ship. So it's all ship travel and combat and everything. 
and uh, focuses in on smaller environments, so it's easier to get around. I think that that helps out tremendously. Just jamming all of the action into smaller areas, it focuses on the good stuff. The traversal part is mostly done in hyperspace from one small outpost to another. And that's cool. And I would uh, encourage people to go and try that out. It's a really nice game they made. And you should uh, definitely experience it. Everspace 2. I'll tell you, speaking of large, endless spaces, this mine seems to go on forever. Big cave. Don't even know everything that's down there. But I did recently hear some screams, and I think I need to go investigate it. Hey, you want to come with me? Yeah, you, you and me. We should, go, we should go investigate the screams. Tell you what, I'll get my flashlight, you get your flashlight, and we'll go and check out the screaming noises that I heard down there. It's blood-curdling. So I'm going to just investigate the screams myself then. You just let, you're just going to leave me to investigate the screams myself? Well, you are not coming to the New Year's party. That's all I'm saying. I'll invite the blood screaming monster before I invite you. How about that? Yeah. Yeah, FOMO. FOMO.